Chapter 6 The Technological Singularity The term technological singularity was introduced by Werner Vinge at a conference organized by NASA in 1993, and it represents a moment in time when with the introduction of AGIs, the possibility of useful predictions about the future stops. The intelligence explosion and the arbitrarily complex tasks that AGIs can attempt, their vastly different ways of reasoning and organizing resources are, at first approximation, such an infinity in the field of forecasting as their own singularities in the fields of mathematics or physics. And in fact, the same way as mathematicians and physicists have not been deterred by the dangers of infinities from studying and usefully handling the singularities in their fields, technologists have started to attempt to understand the types of technological singularity that we can model and classify them, and the AGIs constituting their active catalysts. There is hope that, by applying resources and the right level of effort and smarts, when AGIs will appear, on one hand, we will be able to seed them in a way that will have them behave in a friendly manner, building a world that is compatible with human life and aspirations, and on the other hand, we will be also ready, adapted, to live a fruitful life in a world that is profoundly transformed by their presence. Kinds of minds? We are accustomed at looking at intelligence as a single unified phenomenon, experience, and tool. Homo sapiens sapiens is alone on the planet, with the capability to observe and analyze its own awareness, self-conscious state, and describe and communicate it in rich and nuanced manners. Being the sole species with a given characteristic is surprising, as if we were the only species with eyes, or the ability to perceive and interpret sound waves, hearing. It hasn't been always the case. At certain points in time, different tool-making and fire-controlling species of evolved apes lives on the planet, sharing it, without necessarily being in contact. The last of one of these, Homo sapiens neanderthalensis, the Neanderthal man, lived up until 30,000 years ago and was in contact with our species. We are actually close enough that we could interbreed, which we indeed did, as it appears from our DNA, which still carries, diluted through time, varying degrees of Neanderthal base pairs for up to 3% of the total. It is not certain what drove the other species of intelligent apes to extinction. However, we have a track record of ruthless hunting of animals for meat, the fact that humans brought the megafauna of all continents to extinction. And these were useful, but not even competing with us in any meaningful way. Our hyper-competitive nature is likely to have shown itself at its full destructive power when confronting other intelligent species in the various environments that we colonized through the tens of thousands of years of our spreading throughout the planet. Is this precedent a dangerous premonition of a fate we must try everything to avoid when confronted by a potential competitor for the environments that future explorations will open? When a new option appears to understand the world, like eyes and ears, and to actively intervene in it, like paws and teeth and claws, it gets adopted very rapidly in a kaleidoscope of forms and applications that were impossible to fully predict before. This is the reason that AGIs appear in the plural throughout in this book. Rather than just one artificial general intelligence, there will be a rapid development and diversification due to goals, predispositions, and chance among various AGIs. Any little difference will be amplified through the iterative process of the intelligence explosion. A large amount of effort and resources by AGIs will have to be dedicated to actually keep mutual communication possible to avoid their own Tower of Babel syndrome fracturing their community in isolated parts that can't and won't understand each other. It will be an early test 
of their superior intelligence to avoid going through that phase before reconstituting a global community of being able to successfully model the advantages of the investment in continued development of sustainable and workable communication methods against the short-term gain of devoting those resources to other tasks with more immediate returns and pick the first. If AGIs were to choose the path of isolation and lack of communication, that would unavoidably lead to conflict, as when competition for resources would pit two or more against each other, they would not have the means and the tools of conflict resolution that only those with shared understanding can master. Like tree-dwelling simians in a war-ravaged jungle, we don't want to end up the unseen and uncared for collateral victims of a dramatically escalating conflict of AGIs. We are already capable of degrees of understanding that other species do not have. It is important that we nurture this capacity, that we increase our ability to recognize the mental and emotional state of others, our empathy. And as we design, seed, and finally unleash AGIs on the world, that they carry superior capabilities of empathy with them to be applied to understanding each other and to us for building a shared future. <laughs> 